You and I have been locked into the World Series of Poker. Noticed yes. a familiar face on the ESPN broadcast. Former Patriots great, three-time Super Bowl champ Richard Seymour made a deep run into the field of over 8,500. Amazing. Finally got knocked out last night after the coverage went off the air late. Finished in 131st place, taking home just under 60 grand. And that's the greatest finish of any professional of any athlete professional at the World Series of Poker. Ever. And then the whole f- country was talking about his... Yeah, he had this uh, super fine Louis Vuitton lap bag at, at, that he was wearing, and the mm-hmm. whole broadcast just kept wondering what was in the bag, like Marcellus Wallace's suitcase. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> let's ask the man himself. Let's kind enough to call in from Las Vegas, Nevada, fresh off of an amazing run in the World Series of Poker. I have not spoken to this man in quite some time. How have you been, Richard Seymour? Doing well, gentlemen. How are you? Been, right. been too long, huh? It has been. Th- <laughs> you are calling in more heavy pocketed than you were yesterday, Richard Seymour. What a what a run! Nah. What a run! Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, it was uh, it was definitely fun. You know, I say uh, I say that. You know, um, you know, I, I, who, you know, in spots like that, you just, uh, you know. It, Put it like this: If you would enter a tournament with over five thousand people and think you're going to final table it, you know it's a sucker bet, <laughs> you know. But you know, you just go out, you have fun, and then you know, at the end of the day, you let the results be what they are. And and in this game, all you can do is make good decisions, and you know, it's variance with the cards. So um, you know, it's really a decision oriented game. How'd you get knocked out? What, what hand knocked you out? I didn't see you. The, the coverage well, went off there. It was yeah, late night, late at night, well, right? Actually, I, yeah. Well, actually I, I probably had about 10 big blinds, um, uh, late in the night. Right. And I, I ended up shoving, uh, King four on the button. So it just had to really get past two people who were, didn't have big stacks themselves. So actually it was a pretty solid spot to kind of get it in. Were you suited? Um, Were you suited? No, actually I was off suit there, but I was so tight. The rest, I mean, for about 30 hands, I folded like 30 hands in a row. So I thought I was, I was, I actually would have got it through, but it was just very unfortunate because the small blind ended up waking up with uh, pocket Queens, Mm. you know? And so So obviously he called and then the big blind called as well. And he had ace four suit, ace three suited. But it's funny. So one called, and then the aces in the big blind they ship it all in. And so the queens had the call as well. So it was a three way all in mm. on the hand that I got knocked out. And anyway, like I said, I had king four, and it was a king high flop. So I out flopped the king, the queens, and then the ace was really pretty much uh, drawn to like two outs because. One of the guys had already folded an ace, and then it came bing. He he binked the queen <sighs> on the turn, you know. But I mean, it is what it is. I mean, those are just you uh, know some of the spots that happen. But oh man, it's all good. but a hell of a no run, word. Richard. I mean, that was a a <laughs> a a heck of a run. Um, when yeah. did you first get into poker? Well, actually, I played a lot growing up with my dad, just kind of, you know, okay. and cousins and that sort of thing. And then, uh, you know, just even in the league, you know, we would have like Monday night. I would play with some of the guys uh, while we watch Monday night football. We would just kind of just fool around, like not even for like no money, just uh, bragging rights, uh, you know, when I played. Give me the and, game. Uh, who, who's playing it, in the game? Who Who's in I, that game? Uh, Big, Big John Henderson. Okay. Uh, actually, actually, it was uh, – with my days out in Oakland, okay. Uh, Big John Henderson, uh, Quentin Groves, you know, and then actually, you remember that year? I think it was maybe 2012. We had a lockout. That was, I think, it was the lockout. 2011, year. yeah, yeah, that was 2011. Well, yeah, yeah, it was 2011. So what happened? I had their uh, their entire team come down to Atlanta, and we trained down there while we had the lockout. So what I did is I had some dealers, and you know, just to kind of get the guys together, a little camaraderie. We actually played uh, like a big team tournament uh, then, so it was it was fun. You know, it's just like I said, it's a fun hobby. Sure, some competitive, you know, keep your competitive juices going because everybody. I mean, we still have that that fire to keep it going, but you know, so it's just a great outlet. Well, so you're saying when you played Richard she- Richard Seymour here on the Rich Eisen show, so you said Richard when you played uh, poker, it was in Oakland. 
Does that mean BB stands for Bill Belichick, not Big Blind in New England? Is that what you mean? <laughs> huh? Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen? You didn't have those games at, uh, in New England, Richard? Uh, yeah, no, actually, we had a, we had a few games uh, then, but, okay. you know, we played actually, you know, we would always play, like, different games. I remember Ty Law, he always liked to play Tunk and, you know, a bunch of different other games. So um, that's what we did with those guys. But like I said, it was just, you know, it was just something fun to do and, you know, just great uh, team camaraderie. All right, so what was, what's in the bag, Richard? What was in that bag? Ever, the whole poker world wants to know what the <laughs> heck was in your bag. know what's in the bag. What's in the bag? Uh, what was in actually, the bag? Actually, you know what? Um, I just had some earbuds, so it was my earbuds in the bag. I had some uh, some lip balm okay. in the bag. <laughs> it's uh, a big bag for lip balm and gum. earbuds, Richard. i got to be honest with you. It's a big yep. bag for lip balm and earbuds. That's a large sack for that. <laughs> what? Well, you know what? You know, it, it was really more like a, uh, you know, like the Odell Beckham vet, you know? Okay. It was just a. It was a piece. That's what it was. Okay, so it's an accessory. <laughs> it was an accessory. There you go. Yeah. So you absolutely. It was a yeah. accessory piece. I just love it, Richard. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't go with the hoodie, which would have really been a Belichick move to play poker with the hoodie. You didn't go with the shade. Yeah, you didn't then go. I, then I, I would have had to cut the arms off on the hoodie too. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's just all <laughs> these poker players. They sit there behind their shades and with their earbuds and and then the the hoodies right. and everything like that. You can't mess with the National Football League three time Super Bowl champion with that sort of stuff. You can't get off your game like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, you know what. I'll say this about a lot of the guys that play poker. Um, you know, a lot of them have an online background, and they're so used to playing on the computer right. where they're just making decision after decision. So, you know, a lot of them with them, they just kind of try to take the emotion out of it and just try to make the right decision. So that's probably their only way. And, and, and some of them do well when they transition to live. And then, you know, because it's a different game when you play online versus – playing live because the table dynam- dynamics, you get to feel other people's energy, whether they're strong or weak. And, you know, I mean, so it's a lot that goes into it. So, um, but, I, but I definitely get it, you know. It's a personal game. It's, it's, it's really a game about situations, uh, people, um, and just being able to uh, just read people well at the same time. So yeah, I mean, especially you know, I guess you learn uh, never never fold pocket tens when you flop uh, top pair uh, when you flop an over pair, yeah, Richard. Yeah, you know, yeah, I had an I over mean, pair there. But here's the here's the thing about that. So under the gun open. So if you if you open under the gun, you have to really give their hand a lot of credit and a tight range. Yep. And I flat tens in the small blind. And then the big blind comes along who's, who had the KC shirt on. He he comes along. I check. I, I got the overpair. I feel really good about my hand. But he just open ships it right there. He just jams it all in. And he didn't even care about the under-the-gun razor. So, like, the under-the-gun razor could easily have uh, Jack's Plus yep. in that spot. or You know? And he just open ships it there. So... You know, I, here's the deal. Obviously, I was ahead in that situation. But, you know, when, when you kind of sit back and you reflect and you look at it, um, I would really be guessing. Because the only way you open ship it right there is like you got two pair or you don't hit bottom set or something of that nature. Right. So, you know, like put it like this. In a normal circumstance, I think, in game theory, it's probably a call, but when you take in the factors of the situation and the magnitude of where we were at, um, you know, that close, it's like I didn't think he would just punt his stack. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, because I would never just open ship it right there. But, you know, and that's why I said it, it's player dependent. Now, yep. if the other guy did it, I probably would have ended up calling. But, you know, it's still, like I said, I yep. mean, we can all Monday morning quarterback, but, you know, uh, being in that situation, you know, I think, uh, you know, I was happy with laying those tens down, even though I was ahead. You'll just uh, know for the next time, Richard, next World Series of Poker, never get bet off your hand by Andy Reid. Never, never let that happen again. Okay? <laughs> Tell Andy, huh? Never. <laughs> the play caller. Yep. 
Never let Andy do that to you again with his Chiefs with his yeah. Chiefs golf shirt. Uh, how long? How how long much longer do you think TB12 plays, Richard? What do you think before I let you go? Oh, really good question. Um, you know what? I, as long as he still has the drive that he has and takes care of his body the way that he does, um, you know, it's a great system in terms of a lot of the right people in the right places. So it's a well-oiled machine. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I really think it's up to him. I think he's one of the guys that say, man, you know what? I can set a new bar each and every year and continue to push the envelope. And I think he's one of the guys that, you know, he can continue to push it. So as long as he keep winning and, and keep doing that, I don't see uh, any reason for him to stop. And if you're speaking to Teddy, send him our best, okay? Richard, will you Absolutely. do that? Absolutely. Actually, I have. I have. I have. How's, uh, he, how's, with Teddy and, how's he doing? And and actually, yeah, actually, he, uh, we talked like three days ago, and he's uh, he said he's recovering, but um, that was definitely a scare for sure. So no doubt. I wish him and his family the best. Hey, Richard, congrats on that run. I was rooting. The he- I was rooting like heck for you. I'm like, please do not fold those pocket tens. I was screaming at the screen, <laughs> screaming at the screen. Right. But you I couldn't hear me. Right. You couldn't hear me from my couch in Los Angeles, Richard. Well, you say no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's chat soon, Richard. Let's chat soon. Thanks again for calling in. Appreciate Absolutely. It. And, okay, not a problem. You got to enjoy lot. time with your family. I saw those uh, photographs of. Uh, the Seymour family by the pool while he was hanging with his family by the break. At Big C, S-E-Y 93 on Twitter. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.